Folks, we need to talk about your Slavkovsky and just how elite he has been recently with the Montreal Canadiens. And I'm not joking, he has been that good for Montreal and proving me wrong in a lot of ways recently. But just how much has Slavkovsky's game improved and why is he looking like the top liner the Canadians drafted him to be? Well, make sure you watch till the end as we go through all the game tape here and all the analysis and hit that subscribe button if you're new for more hockey and Montreal content all throughout the year. I just gotta tell you, man, I don't know if you feel the same way, but over the last couple of months, it has been a breath of fresh air seeing Slavkovsky finally look like the player the Canadians drafted him to be. Now we're gonna get into everything as to why things have gotten better for him and what could happen next. But first, let's talk about today's sponsor in BetUS. If you wanna make daily betting picks, BetUS is the best place in both US and Canada. Plus, with the Super Bowl right around the corner, BetUS is giving you a special new customer offer, a 125% bonus on your first three deposits, plus 24-hour payouts, 24-7 customer service in the U.S. and Canada. It's kind of ridiculous just how many options there are for the Super Bowl as well. You can bet on the coin toss. You can bet on so many different scoring attributes as well. There's so many options that if you want to bet on a team not even scoring a touchdown, you can do that too. You even have the option to bet on if it'll be a score agami at the Super Bowl plus 2200. I'm going to put $10 down on this one. I have a pretty good feeling about it. Plus, they got every sport, including hockey, where you can make bets on any game that you want to. So make sure you go down there, click on the link in my description, sign up to BetUS today, and thank you so much to BetUS for sponsoring today's video. Now, folks, like I said, we need to talk about Uri Slavkovsky and just how good he has been this season. And I don't want you guys to laugh when I say just how good. He has five points over his last five, 15 points over his last 21 games, and has been looking like one of Montreal's best players. Sure, I know that's not a high bar right now, but still, considering he's 19 years old, that's what you want to see out of him. We've seen in the past with some first overall picks in the first couple of years, that's not always a guarantee. Boris Slavkowski as that first overall pick back in 2022 at 6'3", 238 pounds, turning 20 this March. The progression has just been so much fun to watch. Last year, of course, we went over just how bad that rookie season was and a disaster with the play as well as just the major injury. And he finished with 10 points in 39 games. Not too good. Now for me personally, coming from the Liga where he wasn't exactly a dominant player, now he did look better in the second half for sure, but I expected his rookie season to be around those lines. I expected him to be okay, not really be pushing too much and still learning, and that's ultimately what he ended up doing. But the second year, showing that progression was extremely important. At the start, it was kind of coming into question. I would say in the first month or so of the season, he was about where he was last year, which wasn't great news. He was still kind of looking like the same player, and even though there were some progressions in just how he was anticipating physical play, the offense and showing that progression in his pace wasn't quite there yet. And it was such a big deal. We made a video about his early season struggles. There was a huge campaign to send him back down to the AHL with the Laval Rocket to see Slavkowski in a probably better situation for him. At least that's what the thought was at the time. But really since that happened, we started to see Slavkowski turn a page. And you can see this here, even though that production isn't staggering season wide, he has 22 points, nine goals in 50 games. It's what he's been doing recently that's been the most impressive. Really, since December, I think we've seen a completely different player in Slavkovsky than what we had seen before. And you can see as we start to get into December and from here on out, he would play 21 games, getting seven goals, eight assists for 15 points. Now, again, it isn't incredible for or anything, but for a 19-year-old first overall pick, still to have that type of progression was pivotal. And especially on a team like Montreal, which does not score many goals, Slavkowski has been a part of a lot of them, and a lot of goals as well have happened even when he hasn't been on the score sheet. The production has obviously been nice to see, but at the same time, what Slavkowski has improved on the most is not just the finishing, not just the point scoring, but what he's doing around the play, how he's anticipating it, how he's getting around the puck, how he's using his body in the way that he should. So many little things that were issues in his first year and a half, issues that were coming up time and time again, have slowly but surely been fixed. For me, going back to draft year Slaff, there were some issues with me with his puck collection, with him anticipating play, really a lot of hockey IQ issues, as well as just using his shot, using more offensive skills that I thought he could have. A lot of it was decision making, a lot of it was play with the puck and pace with it that I thought were serious issues back in 2022. But since then, a lot of things have been corrected with Slavkowski and the biggest thing that has really changed, not really with Slavkowski himself, but just the progress that we have seen 
is Slavkovsky's ability to learn, his ability to get better, because I don't think there's very many NHL players over the past year that have gotten that much better than Slavkovsky. The turnaround has been impeccable. And really, since that first line of Slavkovsky, Suzuki, and Caulfield have been brought together, they have been blissful together. Even though they were kind of broken up about a week and a half ago and then brought back again, still, that's the first line of the future, and they're playing well with it. This is actually a goal that Slavkovsky didn't get a point in, but was instrumental in making happen. In the first period, it would end up being Suzuki's goal. You can see the puck gets wrapped around here, and it gets clotheslined. Slavkovsky comes in, though, right with the stick, is able to break play up, and then it causes some chaos in the neutral zone. Caulfield able to get it back, and then right there, what a bomb by Suzuki, and it's 1-0 Montreal. But I want you to pay attention with Slavkovsky, how much of a difference we are seeing in his game, and it's just putting himself into situations that he wouldn't have put himself in before, using that determination, that work ethic, using speed that we hadn't seen from him so much in the past. He's using it in all these little areas, and you can see, again, just how he's able to rush up the ice, get the stick in, make a smart play. That's the thing with Slavkovsky that was kind of a disconnect, is that there were opportunities to do more in his game. Now, I think we've seen under the development staff in Montreal just how much this player's philosophy has changed, and we're seeing just how much he's asserting himself in every shift. But here we go on a 4-on-4 four four later in the game with the Habs up 3-1. You can see Slavkovsky out here with Jake Evans on the left. And as Slavkovsky comes in, you can see just the kind of pressure that he's able to put around. He spins back. He's able to get in around the face-off mark and then just absolutely kill it into the net. I mean, that's the type of, again, speed and assertion that I want to see out of him. Create some lanes, swerve around, get defenders on their tippy toes. That's exactly what Slavkovsky should be doing, especially in a 4-on-4 four four situation, but a perfect hockey IQ play. Right place, right time, and we're seeing that shot develop as well. Two goals in this game. And on this goal, with it being 4-2 Montreal, Slavkovsky on the power play, absolutely blasts it. Mavison finally passes to him, but a rocket, man. I mean, this is the thing that was the most interesting, because I think in his draft year, I never really expected him to be much of a goal scorer. He had some wonky mechanics, but I think since he's come to Montreal, it's been slowly getting better and better, and this game proved it. I mean, what a wrister in his first goal, and then that slap shot was incredible. What a 1-T, and it's 5-2 for Montreal. Fantastic shot, and Slavkovsky's shot is now becoming an asset. And this just warms my heart as well. Eric Engels tweeting, 25 minutes before practice, Slavkovsky is working with Dr. Shot again. Kane Gooley is also taking reps. But 25 minutes before, Slavkovsky is out there working on his game, working on his shot, and you absolutely love to see that. I think the biggest thing that we've seen with Slavkovsky's game is just how much of, as a person, he is willing to improve and get better in every single area. He seems like an incredibly coachable person, an incredibly coachable player, and we're seeing him put in the work and getting the results as well from it. And that could be the biggest thing that maybe speaks towards the potential of Slavkovsky is not just that he's willing to work and get better, but you can see the definite progress in his shot shot the definite progress in the pace and his assertion and all these things that I kind of had worries about with Slavkovsky not being issues anymore and of course with the physical traits that he has and everything else around his game already being clicked in that's pretty scary now in saying this this is still an incredibly raw player any 19 year old in the NHL is going to be that but it's still at the same time what we've seen with the progression what we've seen in Slavkovsky's game speaks so much to what he could be in the future and really just how much of a good player he will be for the Habs soon. Now, here's the interesting part, is that although last year, maybe the start of this season, was kind of expected from me as a player that ranked him third in the draft class in 2022, what we're seeing out of him now is much more farther along than I expected Slavkovsky to be at this point in his career. And that is very good news for Slavkovsky, for the Habs, and really everybody working for him. You can see just how much of an effort they put into Slavkovsky's development. And I think, honestly, Slavkovsky's progression and the development we've seen gives me a lot of hope towards the future with this Montreal development staff. They've done a pretty good job of a lot of these younger players, but especially in Slavkovsky, the turnaround we've seen, how raw of a player he was coming into what he is now, I mean, who knows what they could end up doing. But now we look towards the future with Slavkovsky as, of course, a first overall pick, and you're starting to see the progression in all these little areas of the game on top of the physical traits and the playmaking ability that he had already onto his toolbox. You have a decent shot that's really progressing well, more determination, better, quicker decision-making in NHL pace, and really everything is starting to round itself out. And still considering how raw he is, considering what he could be in a few years' time, Slavkovsky is going to turn out to be a beast. 
for the Montreal Canadiens, and especially considering some of the offensive weapons he that he has around him. It's going to be fascinating to see what he ends up becoming. And honestly, if we're looking at a player like David Reinbacher too, it also gives me hope that they'll be able to treat David Reinbacher right and get him to the player he needs to be. I still don't think he'll be this top tier defenseman that Montreal probably draft him to be at that position, but I think he'll become a really serviceable minute eating skating D. And with how bad this season has been in the NL, I think getting him to Montreal, getting him to the Val is the most important thing at this point. But considering what Montreal has been able to turn Slavkowski into already at 19, what they could turn Reinbacher into, I'm a lot more optimistic of than if you were to some other team like Arizona. And at this point in February 2024, I'm willing to admit I was wrong about Slavkowski, at least to what I would have maybe expected him to be up to this point. He has definitely speed ran his progression over these last few months, and it's been incredible to watch. But I don't know anyone, Slavkowski has probably looked the most progressed, the most ready right now, which I might not have expected when he was drafted. Of course, the 2022 draft isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. Right now, you have other players like Logan Cooley and Simone Demetz also looking pretty good. So we'll see who ends up being the number one prospect in this draft. But it's going to be really interesting. That top end of the 2022 draft was always pretty close. And between maybe like one to six, I mean, there were so many guys you could have had at this spot. And for Montreal, right now, it's looking like the right pick. We'll see how it continues, but Slavkowski is cooking with the Habs, and that's all you could really ask for. But let me know in the comments down below, if you were to do a redraft right now, would you have Slavkowski number one? Would you have somebody else? Let us know all your thoughts, and of course, on Slavkowski's game recently, what have been your opinions on it? Do you think he will be the first overall player the Habs draft him to be in the future? Let us know all your thoughts, and of course, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for more hockey content just like this, and click on this card for more hockey prospects talk right in one playlist. My name is Nathan, and I will see you in the next one. Have a great hockey day, and goodbye.